Welcome to Mastication-pedia platform. A platform created to increase scientific and clinical information on the rehabilitation of the masticatory system. Before getting to the heart of the Mastication-pedia treatment, a premise is appropriate that mainly concerns two aspects of the social, scientific and clinical reality of the current and the immediately preceding era. In the last century, we witnessed exponential growth in technological and methodological innovations, specifically in dentistry. These innovations have in some way influenced decision-making strategies, opinions, schools of thought, and axioms, in order to improve quality of life, as stated in the exposure science in the 21st century. However, this exponential growth brings with it, implicitly, conceptual gray areas, in practical terms side effects, which are sometimes underestimated, but which may call into question some scientific certainties, or, make them less absolute and more probabilistic. The two sensitive aspects of the current social, scientific and clinical reality, which seem to conflict with each other, but as we will see at the end of this reading will be complementary, are the progress of science, according to Kuhn, and the epistemology. Thomas Kuhn, in his most famous work states that science cyclically, passes through some phases indicative of its operation. According to Kuhn, science is paradigmatic, and the demarcation between science and pseudoscience, can be traced back to the existence of a paradigm. The evolution of scientific progress, is assimilated to a continuous curve which undergoes discontinuity, in paradigm changes. For example, in phase 2 of the Kuhn paradigms, called normal science, scientists are seen as problem solvers, who work to improve the agreement between the paradigm and nature. This phase, in fact, is based on a set of basic principles dictated by the paradigm, which are not questioned but which, indeed, are entrusted with the task of indicating the coordinates of the works to come. In this phase, the measuring instruments with which the experiments are made are developed, most of the scientific articles are produced, and, its results constitute significant growth in scientific knowledge. In the normal science phase, both successes and failures, will be achieved. The failures are called by Kuhn, anomalies, or events that go against the paradigm. Kuhn, however, divides the evolution of a paradigm into five phases. This is a fundamental process for masticationpedia, but to keep tuned with the project, we will limit ourselves to describing the two most significant phases. The Phase 4, and, the Phase 5. Phase 4, or the Crisis of the Paradigm. As a consequence of the crisis, different paradigms will be created during this period. These new paradigms will, therefore, not arise from the results achieved by the previous theory, but rather from the abandonment of the pre-established schemes of the dominant paradigm. Following this path, in Masticationpedia, the crisis of the masticatory rehabilitation paradigm, will be discussed reviewing theories, theorems, axioms, schools of thought and the research diagnostic criteria, and then, the focus will shift on phase 5. Phase 5, or the scientific revolution. Phase 5 deals with the, scientific, revolution. In the period of extraordinary scientific activities, a discussion will open, within the scientific community, on which new paradigm to accept. But it will not necessarily be, the most true or most efficient paradigm, to come to the fore, but the one, that will be able to capture the interest of a sufficient number of scientists, and, to gain the trust of the scientific community. For the same principle of Phase 4, Masticationpedia will propose, in the chapter titled Extraordinary Science, a new paradigmatic model, in the field of rehabilitation of the masticatory system, discussing its principles, motivations, clinical scientific experiences and, above all, a radical change in the field of medical diagnostics. It is almost obvious that Kuhnian scientific philosophy, prefers disciplinarity, as an anomaly, in the genomic paradigm will be noticed better by a geneticist than, by a neurophysiologist. Now this concept would seem to be in contrast, with the epistemological evolution of science, so it is better to lose a few minutes upon it in detail. 
Epistemology is that branch of philosophy, which deals with the conditions, under which scientific knowledge can be obtained and the methods for achieving such knowledge. The term, specifically, indicates that part of nosiology, which studies the foundations, validity and limits of scientific knowledge. In English-speaking countries, the concept of epistemology is instead, mainly, used as a synonym for nosiology, or knowledge theory, the discipline that deals with the study of knowledge. Incidentally, the basic problem of epistemology today, as in Hume's time, remains that of verifiability. The Hempel paradox tells us that each sighted white swan confirms that crows are black that is, each example not in contrast with the theory confirms a part of it. According to the objection of falsifiability, instead, no theory is ever true, because, while it will be only a finite number of experiments in favor, there is also, theoretically, an infinite number, that could falsify it, but it's not also obvious. Because the very concept of epistemology meets continuous implementations, like in medicine.